In this video, we want to look at the shapes of the parent functions for just two key exponential functions. Again, as I mentioned in the last video, I like to deal with things with a base of two because they're pretty easy for us to graph. So your most basic exponential function is f of x is equal to two to the x. Now, there are certain key points that we have for this. So I'm going to write those here specifically for this function, and then we're going to look at what the key points would be for just any normal um, exponential function. So the key points tend to revolve around plugging in negative 1, 0, and 1. In order to work with these guys, you need to know certain properties of exponents. Okay, So let me just remind you of a couple of those guys uh, real quickly. Remember that anything to the first power is going to be itself, right? Anything to the zero power is going to be one, provided that your base is not zero. But of course, the definition for an exponential function has a base that's not equal to zero, so we should be fine there. And when you have a negative power, that means one over a to that power. Remember, a negative power just means you do the reciprocal. So we keep that in mind. Plugging in a negative 1 means 2 to the negative first, but that means do the reciprocal and you get 1 half. If you plug in 0, 2 to the 0, well, we just got done reminding you that anything to the 0 power is 1. And if I plug in 1, I get 2 to the first, which of course is just 2. Now, I can take these points and plot them. We can see maybe there's going to be a pattern. So negative 1, I get positive 1 half. 0 gives me 1. Plug in 1, and I get 2. And what if I plugged in 2? I just want to see what happens if we keep going. If I plug in 2, we get 2 squared, which equals 4. If I plug in 3, 2 to the third, which equals 8. So let's see. 2 squared is 4. 2 to the third is 8. Now, here's what I want you to see and understand about these graphs for exponentials. Every step I take, every unit that I go to the right, I'm going to be, in this case, doubling the distance from the x-axis because of the base. If the base had been 3, I'd be multiplying times 3 every time. But since the base is 2, I'm doubling every time. So if I take 1 half and I double that, I get 1. 1 times 2 is 2. Times 2 again is 4. Times 2 is 8. Times 2 is 16. And so on. So that's what happens as we go up to the right. If I go back to the left, instead of multiplying times 2, I'm dividing by 2. So let's try to see how that works right here. So this guy right here has a height of 8 units. When you go a unit to the left, it's now 4, and then 2, and then 1. So you see how we're dividing by 2 as we go to the left, we're multiplying by 2 as we go to the right. So as I keep going uh, to the left, I get 1 half, and then half of that is a fourth, half of that is an eighth, and then a sixteenth, and so on and so on. It's going to get smaller and smaller because every step, as you go out to the left, you're dividing by two. But if you keep dividing by two over and over and over again, you're just getting smaller and smaller, and you will approach zero, but you won't equal zero. That's a big distinction. So as you connect these points to get the shape, it's going to look something like this. Now, we've talked about these guys in the past. Asymptotes. We have these with rational functions. We have them with exponentials. So you have a horizontal asymptote for exponentials. Because as I go out here to the left, I'm going to get closer to 0, but I don't ever equal 0. So you have, by default, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. But unlike rational functions, you don't have a vertical asymptote. And you might say, oh, this guy's getting really, really steep. He is, 
but he never comes up against a wall. So it's, remember with rational functions, there was this wall when you had a, a vertical asymptote. So you'd be coming along and you would do something like that, or you would go down, but you couldn't go through it, okay? Because we had restrictions on our domain because of the denominator. But in this problem, you don't have those restrictions. For the exponential, for any exponential, your domain is all real numbers. Because you can go all the way left and all the way right, and there's never going to be an issue. There's never going to be a break, a gap, a jump, a discontinuity, nothing like that. And then we can talk about the range. And we have this horizontal asymptote, and we don't cross this. Like I said, as we come here to the left, we get closer and closer to that, but we never actually get to equal that. So your range is going to be parentheses, 0 to infinity. Again, the parentheses is here on the 0 because I don't get to include 0 as part of my range. Okay, so we talk about weird names for some of our functions, and this is one that I, I call like a genie function. And I think back to the movie Aladdin, right? What does the, the genie talk about? He talks about having phenomenal cosmic powers, right? He gets bigger and bigger, right? On one side of that whole genie spectrum, you have phenomenal cosmic powers. What's on the other side? Itty bitty living space. And that's what happens when you get to that tail that are on the left, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's the way I think about it. Now these exponential functions have a lot of real world applications, a lot of uh, populations, uh, whether it's a human population, human growth, um, population of animals or uh, bacteria growth, can be modeled using exponential functions. Or we sometimes talk about things like radioactive decay. And that's also exponential, but instead of blowing up on one end, it's decreasing and getting smaller and smaller exponentially. Okay, and we're going to see some of those examples here a little bit later or in the, in the notes. So just in general, I want to put this over here to the side. When you have a function, a to the x, your key points will revolve around negative 1, 0, and 1. And as we've seen above, we know that this is going to give us the reciprocal of the base, so 1 over a. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 1. If I plug in 1, I get the base itself, so in this case, a. These are the key points for your parent function, with the heavy emphasis on this guy right here. A lot of the early parent functions that we saw had a key point, usually like a vertex, that was at the origin 0, 0. Well, we lost that when we were talking about rational functions, and we're losing that again here. We don't have 0, 0 as a point. What we have as our new anchor, our new base point, is going to be 0, 1. So when you start to shift the graph and move it around, once you find your new x and y axes, you're going to plot 0, 1, and you're going to build from there. Okay? And all the shifting and the translations, all that stuff that we've done before, is still going to be true for these guys. It's just a different shape. Okay? We're going to see some of those in the next video. The other exponential function I want us to look at is very similar to what we just saw, but instead of a base of 2, let's look at a base of 1 half. So if I make my t-table of values, negative 1, 0, and 1. When I plug in negative 1, I'm supposed to get the reciprocal of the base, so the reciprocal of 1 half is 2. If I plug in 0, I get 1. If I plug in 1, I get just the base itself, so I get 1 half. So let's plot these points. Negative 1, 2, 0, 1, and 1, 1 half. So I hope you can see there's something a little bit different going on here than we had in the first one. So in this case, I'm not blowing up as I go from left to right because I'm not multiplying times 2. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying times 1 half. So that means every step I take going to the right, I'm only going to have half of that left over. So I'm cutting it in half every step. So half of 2 is 1. Half of 1 is a half. Half of a half is a fourth. Half of a half is an eighth. And so on. So I'm getting smaller as I go to the right in this case. 
And that's what you're going to see with any exponential that has a base that's between 0 and 1. You're multiplying times a number that's less than 1, so it's going to make it get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, as opposed to multiplying times something that's bigger than 1, which means you get to grow. So I'm dividing by 2 as I go to the right, which means I'm going to multiply times 2 as I go to the left. So 2 times 1 half is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. And so you'll see that this shape is pretty much the same as 2 to the x, except instead of increasing, this guy is decreasing everywhere. Now he's still going to have the same domain. The domain is still going to be all real numbers. And you are still going to have the same range from 0 to infinity. The only problem is that, um, well, not, not a problem, um, but instead of increasing, you're, you're decreasing. And just to kind of drive home the point that this is a one-to-one -one function and it's going to have an inverse, let's do that horizontal line test. So as I drag a horizontal line through this, you see that I'm only ever hitting it in one spot. And then it gets flatter and flatter, but I'm still only hitting it in one spot. Okay, So he passes the horizontal line test. He's going to have an inverse. And if you think back to all the stuff we said about inverses, how x becomes y and y becomes x, that'll give you a good head start for what we're going to see for the inverse. I'm going to hold on for that for another video. In the next video, we're going to take these basic shapes and now we're going to translate, shift them, and do some other weird stuff to them. So let's see how good our graphing skills are.